Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about the Toronto Raptors. It finally happened, man. We've been talking about this for like over a year. Jakob Pertl was officially traded to the Toronto Raptors earlier today. Now, what I'm noticing really quickly are that Raptors fans are not too thrilled about this move. You know, myself included, I did not think this would be the end of moves. Now, at the end of the day, and the bottom line is this... Jakob Pertl makes the Toronto Raptors significantly better. You get a rim protector, you get just a consistent player, don't have injury concerns, you have just, you know, great rebounder, he can score, you know, he used to play in Toronto, it, he's good friends with Siakam, like, it, the fit works perfectly. And, like I said, still, for some reason, you know, the, what I'm noticing across the league is that people aren't too thrilled with this. Now, what the Raptors are saying is that, you know, if we look into the offseason, if we were to trade a cat like OG Ananobi, that's where we'll have a better haul than right now. And I agree fully. I don't think that the Brooklyn Nets got a good... <laughs> I don't think they got anything, to be honest with you, for Spencer... or. Sorry for Kyrie Irving or Kevin Durant. I think they were horrible hauls. The Brooklyn Nets, that's like one of the most embarrassing things to me of all time is you had three Hall of Famers and now you don't. So they didn't even get a good haul for it. So I agree with the front office of this Raptors team. Like if you're actually going to trade OG, I would definitely wait till the trade deadline. I know this was one of the more crazy trade deadlines, especially of recent memory, possibly even of history, just because of the big names getting moved. But if we're talking about actual like quality you know win 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 or win win trades not really you know the lakers is the only one i can really think of off the top of my head so this raptors team is in a they're in an interesting spot because now you have Jakob Pertl, but the issue is you didn't solve your floor spacing issues so yes you improved but you didn't improve in all the facets you needed to improve it Right before we get any further, if you guys enjoy, be sure to hit the like button, hit that sub button. This is—it's been way too long since my last Raptors video. We're, we're gonna—we're gonna ramp that up at a rapid rate. So I hope you guys are excited for that. But anyways, when we take a look at Toronto right now, you're 26 and 30. You're 10th in the East. I can understand why some people wanted to quote unquote tank or blow it up because you know maybe og gets traded right maybe gary and fred who both have player options next year get traded well to be honest with you i don't think that benefits toronto in any way shape or form until maybe like five or four years from now i i don't think that would have been the best case scenario for them i think either one of freddie or gary will be back next year my money would be on fred i know a lot of raptors fans are getting kind of sick of fred i don't really understand that i get it he started the season miserably he's not really even you know he, He's shooting 39.5% from the field this year. I understand it. I really do, but this isn't the Freddy we all know and love. So I think that will be... I, I think that situation will be a lot better by the time the season is over. But, you know, right now, you have a decision to make. Because you got Jakub Pertl, and you're still 28th in three-point shooting, and you're still 27th in field goal percentage, and you're still, the good news is you're dead last in defensive rebounds, but Jakob Pertl is certainly going to help serve that, but the spacing is still going to be a huge issue. It's still going to be a huge issue. So the auto injury certainly didn't help. The little to no progression of Malachi Flynn certainly doesn't help. You know, not acquiring a guard at the deadline certainly doesn't help. So I totally understand some type of frustration or at the very least confusion with these Toronto Raptors fans right now because it's like, well, okay, well, yeah, Jakob Pertl is on an expiring contract. It wasn't the worst of trades. You improved as a team, but you're going to have to pay him next year. And while that is true, Toronto, as far as cap situation goes, I, I don't think 35 mil a year for Siakam is all as crazy as some people make it out to be. But you have Fred and Gary Trent on very reasonable player options next year. So we'll see what they decide. Either way, I don't think, e I don't think both are going to come back because what it's looking like right now is Gary Trent is going to have to sit on the bench because you have a ton of extremely capable starters on this team 
You got Siakam, you got Fred, you got OG, you got Pirtle, and you have Scotty. So you kind of have to make a decision. Is it going to be Scotty? Is it going to be Fred? Or is it going to be Gary? Well, to me, Fred's the only reliable point guard on this roster, so it can't be Fred. All right. I get, you know, even if he's struggling, which he's improved greatly as of late, it just can't simply be Fred Van Double V because you need a point guard. You need more guards out there. It's a toss up between Scotty Barnes and Gary Trent Jr. And it's like, Scotty is, especially as of late, just like Freddie, he's been doing a great job. So I don't think you could bench Scotty Barnes. And if you put Gary on the bench, I don't think he's going to be all too pleased about that. So I'm not worried about financial situations because, you know, Gary Trent Jr. is about a $20 million contract. And, um, you know, I, I really don't. I loved the signing at the time of Otto Porter Jr. I don't understand why this Raptors team refuses to sign like just a backup guard. I really don't understand it. But like I said, at the end of the day, the bottom line is this. You're 16, I'm sorry, you're 26 and 30. You're the 10th seed in the East and you still have the ability to climb your way out of the playing tournament. And at least for the next two years, whether or not, you know, Otto Porter Jr. accepts his player option or you know, Gary Trent Jr. accepts his, or Freddie Double V accepts his, no matter what happens with any of those three contract decisions, the assumption to me is that Toronto is trying to win for at least the next two seasons from now, and that just makes a bunch of sense because you have Siakam guaranteed for the next year and a half, you have OG and an OB 100% guaranteed for the next two or year and a half, and then he has that player option, it's an extremely reasonable rate. You have Chris Boucher pretty much locked up at a steal around $10 million. This year it's 12.6, but it goes down after the next two years. Scotty Barnes on his rookie deal. You know, you still have Precious Achua on a bargain. So it seems like maybe it's not this year that the Toronto Raptors win the NBA Finals. But you got to keep in mind, as tough as this season has been thus far, you know, last year was pretty similar. The start of last year was pretty similar to what I've been seeing right now. I'm not giving up hope. I'm not giving up faith. You know, the fact that you have two guys, Freddie and Siakam, playing 37 minutes a night, that's unacceptable to me. And that's a recipe for disaster, as we've seen continuously. So I'm glad they acquired Jakob Pertl. And who knows, maybe Masai and Bobby have another trick up their sleeve and, you know, they're targeting a buyout candidate and who knows what's going to happen, but at the end of the day, it's pretty simple. Toronto did improve after yesterday, so hit that like button, hit that sub button for daily NBA and NFL content, and uh, most importantly, Raptors fans, let me know what you guys are thinking down below. If you want more Raptors videos, let me know in the comments. That's it. Peace.